with all the COVID related issues, we are trying to keep everything as normal as we can. And hopefully we are trying to be a little bit entertaining while you're housebound or social distancing at least. So it's not that we don't think this is an important subject. It's just we are not experts in that subject. So we're going to do another subject that we're not experts in. And we're going to try to keep this to cars and racing. So appreciate you guys listening to our podcast. Thank you. Bye. Or hello. 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 How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> From the great halls of their house, there are assembled three who hope to one day be the world's greatest driving heroes. Created from the cosmic legends of the universe comes our team captain, the Vision, Bill Fisher. Their soon-to-be Wonder Woman, Vicki Fisher. Our Captain Marvel and head flight trainee, Jennifer Scripchuk. And our Batman, the master of tools, gadgets, and all things mechanical, our mild-mannered soon-to-be billionaire, Alan Danvers. Their mission to fight injustice, share what is right and wrong, to get you out of your house and come out racing with them, and serve all mankind. They are the Garage Heroes in Training Team. Welcome to the Garage Heroes in Training Podcast. I'm going to be your host for this episode, and my name is Bill. Who do we have? I'm Vicki. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Alan. Wow, we did it. <laughs> Amazing. We must have guests. Very important, special, super secret, double secret probation guests. Yeah. Kathy said, hey, I've got people. You want to interview them? And we said, yes, yes, we do. And then they said- Kathy from who? It. Kathy from Lucky Dog. Okay. And then, then Kathy said, one of them's Chris Wilhelm. And we said, oh, that would be awesome. And then she said, one of them's Eric. And I said, well, okay, Chris is good too. All right. So- <laughs> Yeah, so it's, yeah, Eric, you were the first person we ever met there because we came up and saw your car and then we broke it and we yeah. apologize. Yeah. That's how it goes. Cars break. <laughs> you guys did it as well as everybody else does. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris, welcome to the podcast. Thanks. No, no problem. No problem. So I am horrible at introductions. I admit it fully. I introduce as best I can. But uh, can you guys just kind of introduce yourselves just so everybody knows who you are? It could be family, could be professional, could be racing, could be, you know, what kind of background you use on Zoom conference calls. You never know. Whatever you want. Sure. I am Chris, and I'm the head of vehicle safety and technical inspection. So I check out all the lucky dog cars, make sure they comply with our short rule set. But then when the race is actually going on, I usually do radio control, talking to all the turn workers and timing and scoring. So I run the timing computer, make sure everyone's laps are counting and I cheat and adjust and totally rig the results. No, I don't. <laughs> totally don't. Awesome. And how about you, Eric? Uh, I am Eric Torgerson. I'm the director of operations for Lucky Dog. So I am the guy at the track that makes sure the rules are followed and tries to make sure that, uh, all the people play nice with, with each other and that everybody has a good time for the weekend. Uh, and I can just put any old stickers I want, right? I don't have to just put like certain ones, right? I can just put any old stickers. Well, as it's long fine. as you get them all in there somewhere, we, we do have a massive amount of stickers that go on the car. Uh, <laughs> Chris and I, over the weekend working together, um, he and I are on the radio with each other pretty constantly figuring out what to do for penalties and to, to make sure like if there's an accident that requires a yellow or red that's handled smoothly. Um, so Chris and I work pretty hand in hand at the racetrack, trying to uh, trying to make the best experience possible for the racers. Um, we've both been doing this a long time together, uh, in one capacity or another, for many, many, many years through many series. So, uh, so yeah, we're kind of old hats together at this. Um, personally, I uh, I'm an engineer for a uh, broadband company and uh, live out in Oregon. Chris and I both live in Oregon. We're West Coasters. Um, yeah, I guess I skipped. He did skip that part. I've got three kids and uh, what else do I do? Oh yeah. For work, it's always been the same. I've worked for the state of Oregon for over 20 years. Oh, that's nice. kind of sad. Anyway, uh, I do systems administration and information security. 
So Looks like you okay. started when you were four. Yeah, something like that. Okay, very well, very well. So I guess I have to apologize to Eric and Chris. I'm going to get my apologies out of the way. So at the last race we were at, Laguna Seca, we rented Eric's car. We broke Eric's car. We got towed seven oh, times with, with Eric's car. So many times. We got no award winning. Award, award winning. winning. Right. I mean, yeah. you have to, you, you don't just like come upon that. You have to work at it. No, right? we earned it's it. Not, this is a good yeah. job for the car because you could keep driving it. So yeah. it, it was so broken, it couldn't be used. It was just broken enough to be miserable. Exactly. And, <sighs> but there was this one thing. So this was our second race with Lucky Dog. And it was the first time I'd ever gotten out on the track. So I'm nice. doing what we do. And I get the black flag, which I disagree with the black flag, but that's okay. It's, it's whatever. So it's I'm fine. coming up pit, pit road. And I don't know that I had to stop and get one of the clocks before I come talk to Eric. Mm, mm, so mm, so mm. I, got, I got somebody on your team very, very unhappy with me mm. as if I didn't know what I was doing. And mm -hmm. once she saw it was me, she knew I didn't know what I was doing. So <laughs> I just wanted to apologize. It's, it's my bad. Well, you, you are the only person ever to not get a timer. That never happens. No, nope, I know. I know. But, you know, I, I, I do like to, when I know that there is a rule, I do like to follow the rule. And I just didn't know. Exceptional just <laughs> yeah. really fits well. We just, yeah, it's not, everyone doesn't really understand what yeah, so the, the, the rules mean. <laughs> yeah, so that we, we weren't accustomed with timers. Nope. And we also were not accustomed to the required nets in the windows. So that's another thing we kept having to struggle with is to remember to put that net up. You know, our, our, rules, our rule set is very short, um, but we have some things that are different than other series. And it's something that's evolved over time and all of it's based on safety yep. uh, and experience. So both those things are in place to try and make the racing as safe as possible. Nothing, nothing we do is safe on the racetrack, but it's- So what safe. you're saying is, is your list is very short and we broke pretty much all of them? No, no. Just, <laughs> just nibbling around the edges, just not, you know, I mean. We get asked a lot about the window net and about the timers and, and why is this a thing that only Lucky Dog does, although uh, I understand Lemons is starting to pick up on the window net stuff. And, it, and it's, it's just developed over time. The timer is there to slow everyone down. The most dangerous thing we do is pour a flammable liquid onto a hot car with smoking hot brakes and exhaust. So if we can force everyone to take their time and do that right because they have to sit there anyway, uh, it sets us much better results, far less spills. Guys aren't jumping in the car with gas all over them. Uh, so that was something we did way early on. Mm. And it's 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 a pain in the butt for us. It's a pain in the butt for other racers, but it's really good for safety. So we 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 keep it. And enforce <laughs> okay. It so on the opposite, another thought of of that timer was I thought that we had to be in there a maximum of five minutes, <laughs> not a minimum of five minutes. So I'm just trying to hurry as fast as I can because nobody explained that to me. <laughs> We do operate with the assumption that everyone has raced with us before because our, uh, our West Coast yeah. race is a pretty tight-knit group. Uh, uh -huh. Everybody kind of knows everybody. So we, we unfortunately do sort of operate under the assumption that people know what's going on. We also operate with this gross misunderstanding that people actually read the rules. So. <laughs> oh, my God. We, oh. we kind of came in figuring it was very similar to, to the lemons. And, uh, and the other thing is, uh, speaking on Chris's part, was that I know that I mean, Lemons has a very, very intense uh, safety inspection on everything. And I was really amazed that when it came to Lucky Dog that it wasn't as intense. But I also think that you're dealing with a different clientele so, um, where... I think it's just different. It's not... Yeah, maybe it's just different. Well... Well, but you also rented the safety guy's car, so you didn't yeah. really see a thorough safety inspection because he looked at it before and he was like, "That thing's a piece of junk. It's good. It's yeah, trash here. It's as it. good as our driving." But then again, when we have a lot of very, very, very beginners that come into Lemons at the same time, and they need to know that stuff. So, well, what are some of the stuff you look for for safety as far as the car goes? Sorry about that. Chris, you want to talk to me too? Sure, all kinds of stuff. Um, it's actually really similar, uh, but I guess the way that I usually take it is I we have our tech sheet and it has pretty much checkbox for everything that I'll take a look at. But if uh, I don't have one handy or if I'm just checking out a car, 
I usually start at the front of the car and I check it out. The very front of the car, what we look for would be numbers on the bumper and <laughs> tow hook. Because yeah. as you well know, the tow hook on the front is heavily used. So um, we used ours so much it broke. Yeah, once. there you go. <laughs> uh, and then next thing up would be the radiator, usually, as long as the engine's in the front. So make sure that, you know, that it's not leaking and then make sure the engine's not leaking. I check out the alternator, make sure the battery positive's covered on that. I find the battery, make sure it's well mounted um, and that it's not, you know, going to come loose and that if it's in the cockpit with the driver that it's in a sealed box if it's a liquid containing battery what else do we do then you know, now that i'm now that i've managed to move up to about where the the front wheels are kind of looking inside almost i check to make sure that it's on legal tires or on our sponsor hand cook motorsports rs4 uh, our favorites yeah. gotta have those what, what? so yeah there you go Alan There's even a steals them and puts them on his driving car. What? No, yeah. I was just testing. I just had to hold it up. I was just trying to see <laughs> what the ride height would be. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the wider rims yeah. were going to fit. Oh, the was driver, just... right? All right. I, I was driving. I was. <laughs> so go ahead, Chris. <laughs> oh, we're cool. We, uh, then I look, since I'm still kind of looking at the outside of the car, make sure numbers, stickers, all that kind of stuff. I look at the back bumper, same thing numbers tow hook and then i start looking in the car is it clean cleanly and orderly then i'll walk over and i start checking the things that kind of start to matter some more is the window net mounted correctly what's the date on the window net what about the belts are they mounted triple wrap over the hook in the back is the angle right when somebody's sitting in the seat i kind of just guess on that usually it's close if it's not though i'll have somebody come get in the car and check it out then since they are, you know, I've talked about the seat. Is the seat mounted well? Grade 8 hardware, is it loose? Are the sliders crap? Um, then I take a look in the footwell. You know, is there anything obstructing the brake pedal, gas pedal? Are they mounted? Are they actually, do you actually have one? You know, there, there is always that. Some people drive with a slab of metal instead of an actual gas pedal. Safe Just, weight. Uh, yeah, something like that. Um, I, I grab the steering wheel, reef on it, make sure there's no steering lock in there, that they've pulled the key and the lock out of the steering wheel. And then after I've done those things, I start to eyeball the roll cage. And then we, I guess the only real difference in a roll cage inspection from like most alphabet racing and all that is that we require the dash bar. We need the dash bar in the cage, but it's, you know, six point cage minimum, you know, and we halo style down stay style all those things are legal but we just check for good welds penetration construction style and all that we differ a little bit on whether we'll let people run without rear crush structure you know we just look for safe stuff and then i guess mm -hmm. the last thing would be is if they chose to put a fuel cell in that the fuel cell is well mounted doesn't leak all this other kind of stuff and People with fuel cells find out pretty quickly that if it's leaking, we'll just black flag you over and over and over again. And eventually we'll put it on the trailer. So, yeah. If you're it was leaking? Yeah. Yes, your, your trick does not play. So uh, one of the things that I often do with Lucky Dog, I, I sort of speak to attitude about the series. Uh, I do it during a driver's meeting and I do it when I'm talking with people online and, and in situations like this. And one of the, the safety inspection differences uh, that, you, that you notice is that, that lemons and, and we've all raced lemons we all started there and i respect everything they do has has a very absolutist view of car building they, they have first of all the car needs to be cheap needs to be junk right um but also the, the 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 cage has to look like this and the the crash structure has to look like this and your belts have to look like this and we look at the car and say well brought brings what you built and we're going to determine if what you built is safe so we can allow a little more leniency. We can have a little more leeway for, like Chris said, maybe, maybe the crash structure has been modified in the back for some reason or for not. Is it still safe? We, we're going to look at that and make a decision car by car because we're there for the racers. We're there to be, um, we, we call it like a run what you brung series. We, we allow higher dollar builds. We also have a lot of lemons cars that show up. And so the attitude of the series that we try and expound over and over again is we're here to work with the racers and we really want to make them have a good weekend with the safe car. 
and we're willing to look at whatever there is there. If it's safe, great. We don't have any hard and fast, you must do this rules beyond something like the cage has to be built in a way that's going to be safe. It has to have a dash bar in it. That's, you know, has to be there. Where's the dash bar? Well, you know, we're, we're lenient on that. We want to be accommodating. Uh, so our safety is definitely different in that the attitude we approach it with is uh, less rules based and more safety based. We're just looking to make sure it's okay. Good. So, so one thing that I'm sure you guys have already taken care of is you're probably going to get a higher number of first time lucky dog people over in Charlotte. Uh, I love them. Yeah, a, a good chunk. Well, we, you may have people, but I'm sure some of the cars will be new. Like uh, we're going to have three cars there and we're going to rent out to some lucky doggies who, uh, who don't feel like trailering 3000 miles. So let us know. But, you know, I think some of those changes like Alan, are we good with the uh, dash bars? I'm not sure. Don't know. We're not good. Truck. <laughs> Truck. We're good. Okay, so we got two dashboards to build now. Okay, we'll work on that. As good as it's a straight piece of metal. Well, it's right. metal, but not really easy. Not oh yeah, it's just a, it's it's not tubing right now. It's the the crash the front door dash bars are the OEM ones. Right. So you can just tag yeah. a straight piece of metal across right. your A pillars, and there's your dash right. bar. Just okay. get something in there, yeah. On All top, right. below. Don't if you, the below is the painful one because then you keep nailing it with your shins or your knees. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. But yeah. I've seen it done. No, we try to make things comfy. So okay, so that's good. So how did you guys get involved in Lucky Dog? <laughs> <laughs> how much time do you have? For <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't why did you let us come to Lucky Dog? That was how did you get involved? <laughs> yeah. A lot of poor decision making. No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> both so, ways. Way back in the day, way, way back in the day before Lucky Dog and before Chump Car, when Lemons first started, their very first race outside of Altamont, I was part of, um, and I was hooked. I, I built an MR2 with some buddies, and we went to as many races we could get our hands on on the West Coast. And so I made a bunch of friends in the Lemons community, and when Chump Car got started, and it got started out of a bunch of Lemons racers who had the idea that they could do it better, um, I got asked if I wanted to come first volunteer and then the very next day if I wanted to join them and start working for them. Uh, so I worked for Chump Car for the first three years of its life and that's where Kathy was working. So Kathy and I met while she was working for Chump Car. Um, this would be in 2010, 2011, and 2012. And we ran 32 races in 2012, I think. So Kathy wow. and I rode together pretty constantly, uh, hung out all the time. Uh, I departed from Trump Car and took a couple years off of racing. Uh, eventually, she parted ways and she started Lucky Dog. And um, when it became obvious that that uh, Kathy really likes to make people happy and she's really bad at saying no to people, and she needed somebody who was really good at saying no to people, so she asked me if I would come join her and sit and pit out and tell people they're bad dogs and not let them talk me into giving them laps back and be a nice guy. So, uh, so I got brought in to to make sure that. I was the enforcer, but I brought, got brought in because Kathy and Chris and I have been doing this forever. Yeah, I started, it was way back in, uh, oh, I don't know, it's probably, it was in the mid-2000s when I started racing Spec Miata, um, mainly just through friends. I never had my own, um, but it was, it was cool. I got into the racing scene that way, and then this chump car thing was going to show up in Portland their first race in the fall of 2009 and you gotta love the cat anyway no worries so fall of 2009 in portland and we had no idea whether it was going to be a race or a game or is there going to be a race that breaks out in the middle of this game or a game that breaks out in the middle of the race we weren't sure so we prepared a piece of junk and went out there and had a great time uh, only 24 hour race at Portland ever loved that. And then we went, it was, they were coming back the next year. So I volunteered and that's when I met Eric. And then, so shortly after volunteering in that October, 2010 race, Eric's like, yeah, you can come work for me. We met at this totally shady pizza place in St. John's neighborhood in Portland. And Eric bought me pizza and that was good. 
So <laughs> I, I joined Eric in uh, Chump Car at that point in time and then met and figured out who Kathy was. And uh, I stuck around with Chump Car till 2014. Yeah, 2014. Um, and then parted ways and Kathy fired up Lucky Dog in on uh, St. Patrick's Day of 2015. So, yeah, that's how I got involved. Yeah. So you guys mentioned Lucky Dog names. Can you fill that in and, and maybe even give oh, a couple yeah. other people that we know? Yeah. So Kathy is, of course, the uh, the top dog. You know, she owns the series, so she's top dog. We had a, a past staff member. His name was Oliver, and Oliver was the hot dog. Interesting. No, good times. Eric is bulldog. I am the junkyard dog. Um, <laughs> JYD. And, yeah, and then we've got, is Dave big dog? Or is, no, that's, that's Greg. Greg is big dog. Greg, Kathy's husband's big dog. I can't remember which one Dave became. Dave is HR. We just, he's, yeah, whenever we have an argument, we're just like, Dave, where's HR? <laughs> it's good times. Um, and then, yeah, we each have an inventive dog name. I can't remember any more off the top of my head, but, but yeah. Kathy is at her soul and heart a marketing person, and she wants to make this <laughs> and engaging. She's not a business manager. She's not, uh, you know, a... Uh, um, corporate person she she is a marketing person and she loves to sell stuff so giving us all silly names was definitely one of her uh you know make this fun and, and engaging ideas uh, we didn't have a choice in the matter you have shirts with them on it are they on shirts no, no they but they do appear in our supplemental rules from time and to time the website. Each event. You, yeah you go to the website, I, where all of our names are on there i think you need to have statues in the suitable lucky dog style to uh, mimic your nicknames. I, I, I totally agree more. Since I've never actually won a trophy for racing, I'd like to get one given to me for my name. <laughs> you know, I mean, we, we have the same name aspirations. If someone else chose you and yeah. gave you, you want a trophy. You know, it sounds reasonable. I, I'm right there with you. <laughs> so nice. very well, very well. So what's your racing history? What, where did you get your start? What, what, um, what got you going? Where have you been? What, what's the story? I didn't do a ton of driving. It was really, uh, I had drove my friend's Miata to learn how to drive on a racetrack. It's a great car to learn what you're doing. And then my street car was a Subaru WRX. And so, um, you know, I took that out on the track, but it still was really stock. And so I melted the stock brakes off of that in no time. Um, nice work. I was, yeah, yeah. And then I melted the tires off of it too. It was a good time. Of course. I mean, um, well, you why go not? faster with no brakes. I mean, yeah, yeah, right. All they do is slow you down. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly that. And so we, uh, I just kind of kept at it from there. And uh, but the thing is, is I, I actually found that I like helping people race and getting people into racing, and facilitating race events more than I do driving. Strange as that sounds, that's just my experience with it. But I still don't mind driving. It's been a while since I have. I think the last time I've driven in anger was at the 36 hour race in Spokane, Ugh. which was uh, an epic event. So not only did I work that Once event, half, I drove huh? in it. So after taking a 12 hour shift in uh, radio control and uh, timing, uh, I then jumped in the car in the middle of the night and drove faster than all my teammates from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m., which is pretty amazing. Um, and then I, uh, I got in an accident, which wasn't that big a deal. I broke the lights on the car, but because it was like 5 a.m. in the summer, the sun was already coming up. So, yeah, uh, good times. But uh, I haven't driven since then. What okay. about you, Eric? How did you get in? Uh, I, I was into cars since I was a teenager, and so I, I got into 60s V8s. So the first thing I ever did was to go drag racing um, because that's super accessible. You just show up and as long as your car isn't too fast, uh, you, you can just drive what you've got. They don't need roll cages or anything other than a you know, motorcycle helmet I borrowed from a buddy. So I spent a bunch of time and money, you know, going 13 seconds down a quarter mile track. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. And, and then, uh, and I'm like, well, this is kind of boring. 
Um, all I'm doing is spending money and chewing up tires and, you know, it's 13 seconds. So I'm going to go do autocrossing because autocrossing is accessible. So I joined a local autocross club actually down uh, in Salem in Chris's area and uh, started going out and doing autocrosses. And uh, I, I had at the time a Volkswagen Corrado, which was a spectacular autocross car. It was just my street car. Um, but again, G60? BR6. BR6. Okay. It was, a, it was a great autocross car. It would rotate really nicely. Um, and it didn't even break in, in the minute and a half runs I was doing, which is sort of saying a lot for a Prado. Um, but again, I, you know, I was driving for a minute and a half and I'd do that three times in a day and then I'd stand around and work the rest of the day. So I got kind of pissy about doing all this work for a couple seconds of driving time um, and started looking around for the next thing that was gonna not be that. Uh, and I did one HPDE where we did 15 minute sessions on a racetrack. I thought, this is great, 15 minutes is amazing. And uh, that was like 2008, 2007. And then this Lemons thing made it into motor, um, road and track, motor trend, wherever Lemons got their first big break. And uh, I went on to a car forum uh, back when forums were still a big thing. Car oh. forum, huh? Wow. Yeah, right. was, uh, late 2000s, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like it. And I just made a post that said, hey, uh, I want to go do this Lemons thing. I need somebody to do it with me. And a guy, Wrote me back and said, yep, I want to do it too. I've got a car. And uh, that guy was Matt Upton Kelder. And I'm hoping he's going to listen to this because he and I are now best buds. Uh, we have spent since then uh, a ton of time together. We've actually built a house together. So we have a vacation house we share that we built together. He worked for Chump Car forever with us, volunteering. So through that one fateful choice to go to a lemons race and get my start in road racing because I wanted more seat time, I've uh, yeah, <laughs> changed my life trajectory pretty pretty significantly so uh, racing even though i got started doing 13 second runs is is uh become a very major part of what i do i awesome. totally forgot that uh the autocross part so yeah i also was way into cars and so down in eugene before i went to college just as a high schooler i had actually i guess i was in college for a year by that point but i still didn't really have a home home so we ended up racing the car I drove at the time, which is, I still have it. It's a 64 Ford Fairlane. Cause if you think autocross, that's totally what you want is a 64 Fairlane. I mean, so, it's, yeah. it's in the textbook. I mean, you know, oh, that's, yeah, that's clearly. the one. And so I went down and in, in Eugene, I'm trying to think that was either 99 or 2000. And uh, I went to enough events. I won F stock in the Emerald empire sports car club autocross series down there in Eugene. And then, uh, I stopped once I got my Subaru uh, WRX. I autocrossed that thing to death as well, which also contributed to dismissing many tires and mini brakes. So, yeah, there was an autocross thing in there. And just to be clear for your listeners, if this makes it through the edit and you guys are listening to this, autocrossing isn't really racing. Wow. No, it's just dodging cones. I'm just going to make that statement right now. If All it's right. not racing. <laughs> All right. If you, need, if you need to send uh, Eric any comments on that, just send them to Garage Years and Training at Gmail. Uh, we'll forward them to him or or bring them in in triplicate when we uh, see him down in Charlotte. I know, but uh, that's, that's, I count that as my start. However, if you're doing autocrossing, get out of the parking lot, and get to a racetrack, go racing. <laughs> nice well we've done that i mean listen if you look at our track history we put people that have barely driven cars you know jen drove standard like maybe four or five times boom and then she's out there racing uh you know my son i what, had his permit for a month and a half put him out the there car. on the track yeah put him right? in the car put him in the car let's go <laughs> next <laughs> um, no yeah we've had by fire yep you yeah. find out quick, you know, like, hey, all right, this guy's too slow. This, you know. Well, and, Jennifer uh, can't make it up the hill at uh, New Hampshire. Whatever. It's, it's all know, good. She always wants gas in the car. You guys didn't put gas in the car again. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your upcoming race schedule look like, provided there is one? I don't think anybody knows. Be because all of the states are handling their openings differently and it's changing every day. We really can't say with any certainty what it's going to look like. Um, we, we, we haven't closed any we, that we don't have to yet, so we still have races on the schedule. Speaking personally, not for the series, I'm not super optimistic that we're going to make these near-term races. Um, just living here and being part of the, the culture, it doesn't feel like 
anything's ready to be opened up yet. Um, so I, I don't see that happening, but they're still on the schedule and maybe I'm wrong and that would be awesome if I'm wrong. Yeah. Yep. If we're mm -hmm. wrong or right or however it is you want to spin that, um, our schedule as posted is what we're doing. Uh, so we've got an event at Pacific at the end of this month that we'd like to run. We have another event, it's on our schedule, and we just added that event down for Monday. I think it's Monday though. What would that be? Monday, like June Monday 15th. the so we're, Yeah. We're selling it. This is our this Oh is our totally. Opening. So you have an actual opening. We yeah, have, right. Opening we just added Willow yeah. Springs International down in Rosamond, California, outside of Lancaster. That is on Monday the 15th, Tuesday the 16th of June. It's a one day, Monday the 15th only. Oh, you're right. Yeah, Monday the 15th only, one day. Unless awesome. something changes drastically, that race is happening because they are currently running events at that track. Um, that county is allowing them to operate. It'll be modified. We'll be wearing masks and being social distanced and all that. But yep. Unless something Gloves. changes, that event is happening. So that's a one-day, 14-hour race that, that uh, people can travel to. The, the, you know, the racetrack out there is really cool. A lot of people haven't been out there. Uh, it's kind of out in the, in the boonies. But we encourage any teams listening that are in the Southern California area or want to tow all the way down there uh, to come check out our one-day Monday race. Yeah. One-day Monday. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and then, yeah, the rest of our schedule, you know, is subject to change as always, but it's on the website. Check it out. Okay. So, guys, since you started racing um, and actually have gotten more serious about it, how has your philosophy changed over time? Uh, I would say it hasn't. Okay. We started out going into it for fun. This is a hobby. No, nobody that I know is going to be racing for any kind of money. Uh, Lucky Dog now has some really cool prizes if you win. You know, you can get tires, you can get tools, and there's all kinds of really neat stuff if you win. But at the end of the day, this is a, a, a hobby that we do, and it's, it's for fun. And if anything, I've gotten more casual about it, and I've stopped trying to win. Uh, I, I don't really care if I place. What I care about is that everybody who shows up has a good time, and that's always been the way it is for me. Um, th this is about the people, not the, the victory. And that's been consistent the whole time, which is probably why I'm still doing it 15 years later because it's still fun. Right. Yeah. I guess that's my philosophy too, is I, I totally embrace the idea of trying to get more people in cars, more people driving, more people involved with the sport um, and be, have a great time, be happy. I always thank people for showing up and for choosing to spend their dollars with us because it's cheap, but it's not, it's, it's a hobby so you waste all your money on it anyway but the idea is to you know just give everyone a, a really positive experience so that they're you know always willing to come back and that's fulfilling for me for me uh just because everyone else has a great time me too and then i have a good time and you know having done this for so long we've seen a lot of teams come and go and the teams that show up and need to win and the teams that have this attitude of um, competition at all cost, always, always, always burn out. The teams break up. They don't have fun on the weekend. They're always angry at everybody around them. And I don't know why they come do it. Uh, we, I, I give a speech at the beginning of every race. And what I basically tell people is, you know, in some version of, we're here to have fun. Don't forget to have fun. Be kind to your fellow man uh, the, and woman. But the, the, uh, the people that we meet at the racetrack, and I see it all the time, they meet their best friends at the racetrack, people who never knew each other, pit next to each other, and they're lifelong friends. They know each other years later. Right. Um, and that's what this is about. The, the, the winning is, is a nice thing, and, and do, having a good weekend feels real good. But this is about the people, and it, it's about the experience. So, Eric, uh, I had um, – I was talking to a friend earlier today um, when he stopped by the house <clears throat> for a grind. Um, <laughs> he dropped off a little car. Uh, it's a 90s, I think it's like a 93, it's a Civic. I don't know if you know anything about those Hondas or anything. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. we're going to try to race that sucker, you know, like it, it's in Charlotte. In Charlotte. Yeah. So, could you tell us a little bit about uh, your crazy Honda and its little history? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> The They're one that, that I'm I'm sure in our in our past podcast the the one that we mentioned send it 
Well, this is the Eric and the Honda. <laughs> and, 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 and one important thing we need to know, is the number 196 taken for Charlotte yet? <laughs> I have uh, no idea. <laughs> Chris and I are both very, very fortunate. We don't touch the back end stuff. We don't have to deal with registration. We don't have to do the paperwork. Um, thank goodness we have to do the paperwork. So I don't have any idea, and I'm glad I don't know. You guys should definitely take 196. Um, <laughs> you know, there's some humor in me driving a Honda Civic because I'm not a Honda guy and I don't like Civics. I don't think they're very good cars and I have had really poor reliability with these cars, but they keep getting given to me. <laughs> it's like a bad penny. Be being the cheapskate that I am, I have raced them. I've learned how to make them do okay. Uh, this car that you guys drove um, is my second car. The first one got wrecked at Pacific and was unrecoverable. Um, there's a huge long story behind these Civics. Do you guys want the huge story? We, we sure. have plenty of recording tape in our computers. Yeah. Um, well, so Kathy calls me up uh, three years ago and says, hey, do you want this race car I've got sitting here? My daughter wrecked it on the dirt track. <laughs> so it made all of a couple of minutes of racing and then got put into a wall. And, you know, according to her and according to Greg, uh, her husband, it was, you know, it was, it was recoverable. It was salvageable. It was fine. Um, so my buddy David and I and a friend decided to go down to California from Oregon, drive the 10 hours down there, put the car on the trailer, and then drive the remaining 13 hours south to Los Angeles to go to this racetrack we're talking about, Willow Springs, and race this car. Because, of course, it's, it's fine. It's drivable. Well, we get there, and... It's been wrecked a lot harder than we were told. Um, the front right wheel was about six inches higher than everything else. Um, so, so it wasn't us? No. Uh, okay. so car, we, we put it up against a building and ran into it with the tow truck until we got it kind of straight <laughs> in shape. And then we put it on track and we raced it. Um, and it was utterly terrifying. The, uh, the wheel bearings were gone and one of the axles was broken, but still kind of connected. So the front right wheel made an eccentric motion um, the whole time. So the car was jumping three and four inches at any speed, and then you'd turn and it would kind of lock itself up. It, it was utterly, utterly terrifying. So we towed that car back to Portland and uh, got a new shell, cut the cage out of it, put the cage in the new shell, transferred the motor over because the motor was great, you know, put, put the transmission over there. And that car, uh, I ran for 40 races. At one point in time, I was the most raced car in the series. Nice. Um, Chris, do you remember that? How, how many races I did in a row or something? Oh, uh, yeah. It was, it was like contiguous, you know, you were, you were up there with some of the original cars as far as how many races the chassis had been through. It yeah. had gone, but yeah, Eric didn't miss, miss a race at all. He towed that thing all the way down the Willow Springs. That's no short tow. No. Uh, I don't know. I guess if I look at the East Coast, what what do you think that would be? Would that be like a that be like a Pennsylvania to Florida? Yeah, be Pennsylvania to Florida. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Um, so. so that that car was great. That had a little D series in it, a little D sixteen. And excuse me, Commissioner Gordon. And uh, and <laughs> it made a it made one hundred and thirty horsepower in the dyno after I had been monkeying with it forever, which was a reasonable amount of power for that little car. Uh, dyno. Yeah, well, I dynoed it. And the funny thing was I put it on the dyno and it started at 88 horsepower. And so with tuning. So you almost pump gas. Pump gas. Yeah. I'm pump gas. 88, 80, oh, 87 octane. I don't, I'm not paying for high dollar. <laughs> you're high <polluting> <laughs> <laughs> so, My car doesn't deserve that. No, my, my drivers don't deserve that. That was the car. Um, but yeah, actually the dyno time, I was really sketchy about it, but we went from 88 to 130 horsepower in a two hour dyno session. So wow. that actually paid off really well. Um, but then that car got wrecked and I got a new race car in a hurry because this crazy group of East Coasters was flying out to run a race. It was wackos. <laughs> so I bought a car three weeks before you guys showed up and it was not the car I was promised. It was not a complete race car. So I ended up rebuilding it in a few weeks and slapping together a used motor and you know trying to get nice. all while working and uh you guys know the rest of that story you showed up and it was not we're great man that thing was it was, it, it nice was condition it was it was good until it was tested a little more it had, like than I vent think. windows inside like you could it was like the lounge car you just put your arm on the side i mean it was sweet yeah so we learned a very valuable lesson that weekend 
Yeah, don't let don't <laughs> the professionals drive your car. Um, uh, so that car has been a problem. It's never run right. Uh, it's never had a good weekend. Um, and I, and you know, the handling you guys drove it out on at Laguna, the handling was never quite right. And I can't figure out why. So it is still a work in progress. I actually have the motor all torn down and a new motor being built right now. Um, I keep trying it, at it, but it, at the end of the day, it was, it was weird on Laguna. It is. And I, and I don't much like the platform. I don't, I don't like the way the front suspension works. I don't like the way the motor bolts in in front of the axle. I don't like the weight balance. Uh, I'm a Toyota guy at heart. Um, so, nice. but these cars just keep being given to me. So, <laughs> what we have. Well. Yeah, Vicky, Vicky came out of Laguna going, I hate front wheel drive cars. I hate front wheel drive cars. And we're like, it's not front wheel drive. It's just, there was, it was a handful. You know, I, 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 I never said the S word. Oh, so many times <laughs> as I was driving that car, going around the corners going, <laughs> Yeah, it, it was oversteer happy in crazy ways. And uh, I will say yeah. that the, the one thing you did that was the, the sign of what a good host you were was when you went out and wrecked the car in less than two turns, that made Vicky so happy. She's like, it's not <laughs> just love, me. My friend. It's love. not just me. <laughs> in my head, I am still kicking myself for that. I am still really <laughs> That was embarrassing uh, it, every possible way. Because I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go out and put a good time down. And I expected the car to do one thing, and it was not what that car was doing. Yeah. It, it, um, I, I think the ridiculousness of our weekend was just hysterical. It was fun. We had a great time. Yeah. I mean, we tried, we seriously tried our best and I felt so bad about the car. I mean, I tried my heart. I had never been so scared on a racetrack in my entire <laughs> life. And I still race that racetrack with that car. I really tried. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, so I've got all new sheet metal for it because we did hit the wall four times and the front <laughs> is not salvageable. So it's got a wow. For it. uh, I was going to say well, you I mean, got more uh, towing miles than you got air airline miles for that trip, but guaranteed cumulatively. We, we, we got yeah. an award for Eric, so that was, that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that. So that's that's how that car exists. Um, if you guys got given a Civic, the good news is that rebuild kits are one hundred and ten dollars off eBay, and for the uh, motors, right? As long as the bearings are okay, the motors are pretty bulletproof. Um, so you guys should have good luck with it. It's just trying to get the handling right can be a bit, a bit tricky. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, we uh we do appreciate it. We have we have had a great car at the time. I did see a posting on Facebook where you put a picture up of the car after we got done and everybody started saying, who did you read this to? Why? Oh my God. Who He's did this to your car? Oh my God. Oh my God. So, you to the wall. so I quick sent you a text. I'm like, Eric, I'm really, really sorry. Are you mad at us? And you're like, no, it's fine. <laughs> well, and, and I got, I got a whole bunch of people saying, well, you should make them pay for that. I'm like, no, no. I, did, I brought a car that wasn't handling right. And it got worse over time. That's, that's definitely not on you guys. So that was something wrong with the setup. And I, I, to this day, don't know what it is. So, but now that you know the cost of the vehicle, it was given to Eric. You could reimburse them that exact cost. <laughs> Look at oh, that! It's done. You well, paid we, for it. We do yeah. owe him a. Uh, we owe him a dinner. We did not get to take him out that weekend. We were up there because everybody was just way too busy trying to put things back together again. So. Uh, oh yeah. my God! That we had the best time though. I mean, every time we come out to Lucky Dog, I mean, it's like on our two trips. Well, our two trips, we had such a good time. Each time we came. Perfect. That's the whole point. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time we ever really raced on a Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, the, the irony of this interview is that even though you guys have flown out here twice to see me and use my car, this is the most we've ever talked because I'm always... <laughs> <laughs> That's because you run the, uh, the dog so pound, now, I think. So yeah. I must admit that having pit stalled and pit one when we did the pro, it was very convenient. I had plenty of time and open ears. I could hear all the good stories about where the sticker should go. And could you just put that sticker on the side of your car and just not be, you know, like it was awesome hearing that. So I heard a lot of you speaking, you know, we're, uh, we're close at, there. At other yeah. people. At other people. <laughs> <laughs> and you certainly guided us through getting – um you know, it was awesome for uh, my crew to see like a motor come out and go apart and back together. That really was that was good for us. 
so it much really fun. Was. We learned a lot that weekend. I learned a lot that weekend. Yeah, yeah. General yeah. Jen over there with the, all right, what's next? I just kept me going. Finally, I was like, all right, listen, Jen, 11 o'clock. I'm calling tonight. Right, but we've never, just, as a team, we've, we've never done that as a team. And that was a good learning experience. I mean, we didn't get a lot of track time, but as a team, we learned a lot. Yeah, we did. So it was good. That's a great so attitude. <laughs> no, we, we really, <laughs> we really enjoyed ourselves both times. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was. <laughs> It was awesome. The, the only downside was when you had those two sprint races and you couldn't open <laughs> the gate and we just sat on the other side with our engine waiting to come <laughs> over. I was like, oh, heartbroken. <laughs> yeah, we loved it. We, we really enjoyed it. it, was, it was great. Any adventure is a good adventure, right? Absolutely. It is. It is. I mean, we could have gone out there and dominated the entire weekend and took trophies <laughs> yeah, home with us. Right. Fast's lap after Fast's lap. We, we had to share with you guys. Right. You know, I mean, we didn't want to be those guys. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody could do that. Yeah. All it takes is money. I know. I know. <laughs> I thought it was obnoxious that Vicky qualified going in reverse. But, you know. <laughs> I did a spin out in the chicane <laughs> and I looked at the traffic coming to me like, Oh my God. <laughs> and I just, I just floored it. Just did a donut. I'd never drove a front wheel drive and it was challenging until somebody explained it out and how you're supposed to drive a front wheel drive. Well, you'll find other cars, other front wheel drive cars won't handle like that. Uh, I intentionally set these things up to be really, really loose because otherwise you just plow the front tires for every corner and it's miserable. Right. So, uh, you may find with your Honda that as you're going into the corners, you're just scrubbing the front tires the entire time and it never oversteers because you probably won't set it up that way. So it may be an, another entire new learning experience with this new car. <laughs> I, just, I just remember when we got home, you guys popped up the videos and we're watching it and I'm watching I'm like, Wow first place car passed us lapped us in uh two and a half laps that's spectacular <laughs> you know you know i know eric that, that your nickname is bulldog but bulldog is actually a perfect name for that car because <laughs> that what it felt like on the uh it's like a vicious little bulldog <laughs> driving it around the track with the back it was end it much... doesn't really do anything you know <laughs> yeah but it was all like the, the the face was all mashed up on it and and it was <laughs> drooling all over the place it was drooling. drooling inside the cab on my right. shoe you yeah know. It's pretty much exactly Somebody like kicked a the back end of it it was just a yeah. mean little dog yeah frothing at the mouth as it, the radiator overflow <laughs> oozes it's probably more of a pug really yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah really, really i think i'm a bulldog With an i think attitude, i'm a bulldog right? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have a lot of quit in it though. If you smacked up four times in one race weekend, it's still oh, kept yeah. going. I heard it yeah. drove on the trailer after, so it did. I'm just saying yeah. that's not it, that's... It, it it would not give up. It just it, it I couldn't tell what it was. I was like maybe the oil leaking? I don't know, but something's weird. <laughs> it's, it's very broken. Yeah. It was uh it was it needed some TLC <laughs> for sure. Well, the it was is out getting resealed, so we never have to deal with that terrible oil leaking again. Where is it coming out of? Just everywhere? Or? Everywhere. Just every, it's yeah. coming out of yeah, all of it. Yeah. We we went through seven or eight quarts of oil. Yeah, it had Ebola pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember um we remember we had the uh we had to stop the race for a minute. We were, everybody was on the pit row. And uh, Vicky goes over to Mentals driving the car, and there's just oil all over the inside of the thing. So she ends up like her feet are dangling out the car, and she's wiping up the thing for it. And I'm like, um, "Do you know what it <laughs> looks like you're doing right now?" And Mentals like, "Well, you know, I would have raced with you guys a whole lot more if this was the kind of service we were going to get when we we're driving." <laughs> so that was in the flyer. I didn't... Yeah, I had to. Yeah, I had to go in and I had to wipe the floor because every time he would step on the pedals, his feet started sliding off because yeah. oil was in the gas. It it's fine. Like were... <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what was the what was the name? What was the the quote of the weekend? Send it. Send it. <laughs> yep. It's something we say quite often. It turns out. Yep. It was it was quite fun. So uh, we, we have a traditional question that we like to do, and, and you guys can answer this from the perspective of how you guys have done with your racing and racing series or how Lucky Dog's done with their racing series. But um, we do the good, the bad, and the ugly. So what do you think has gone well 
and what do you think maybe didn't go quite so well? And the the fun one is always an, an ugly story. It doesn't have to be anything bad, but it can be something just something that has just completely gone off the rails. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> it could be something you've seen on Lucky Dog. <laughs> something could have been some East Coast to people you or somebody you know. that happened to somebody else. <laughs> East Coast podcasts that always come out there and break your cars, you know. <laughs> Interesting. So, I have the worst memory in history, so I'm going to have to sit here and think about this for a minute. Chris, have you got any sounds ideas? Like, sounds history? like Chris got elected to go first. Okay. Ooh, the, so good. Good to bad, the ugly. Ugly. Yeah, you know, I. it's hard to pick any one good moment because there's so many good moments, but I'd say... One of my favorite good moments was probably at Willow Springs. Um, it wasn't so great for Kathy. Kathy uh, uh, wasn't feeling great that weekend and didn't make it. So Eric and I and some other staff ran that event. But, you know, we do hospitality a little bit different than the marketing director. Um, mm -hmm. And so we called the local places and we threw together this buffet taco uh or Mexican dinner. It was it was really good. We were like, but we got to have drinks. And so we went to the local Walmart or whatever it was, bought the worst tequila ever, all this terrible, terrible tequila drink or a margarita mix. Um, and But everyone had such an awesome time. And in typical Willow Springs style, I'm pretty sure it was like 118 during the day. The overnight <laughs> low was like a frigid 96. So, you know. <laughs> It just hotter than hell, but it was still good. Everyone had a great time, but that's just one example because we have a good time almost all the time. Uh, the, the good bad. news is if you get bad tequila, it's only bad the first few times, and then you don't notice. Until the next morning. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. As far as the bad, hmm. Well... <laughs> It'd be something that somebody shouldn't look to do again. Perhaps they made a, uh, oh, a uncalculated anybody error. Learned some, yeah, every, anybody learned gonna... some valuable lessons. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably save that one for the ugly because it was so much worse than bad. So. Okay. We like ugly. Uh, Ugly's quite uh, fun. Yeah, so, so bad. Hmm. What are the, one of the annoying things that just, just like, oh, man, this, this one's just, yeah, it was there. I'm thinking I'll get to it. Particularly but you bad. can edit it so we could do the ugly first. No, I'm kidding. We could do anything uh, you want. <laughs> but yeah, oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. You can yeah, you got an ugly? ugly Give us the ugly. Is Eric still thinking over there? He didn't even write anything down yet. He's going to forget again once he remembered it. So we got time. <laughs> so, Chris, if you want to jump to ugly, we're good. You want to say 196? That's fine, too. You know, I, I'd have to say the bad, and there's been more than one bad, but the bad is when we uh, we get people that show up to race that it's not that they haven't read the rule book. It's that they don't even know who we are. They <laughs> honestly like showed up and it's not just being novice or not, you know, being familiar with it. It's like, it's like they're, they couldn't be bothered to actually even know who we are or what our rule book says. And that's, that's when I'm just like, ah, really guys, come on. And so I would have to say that for me, at least in my position of checking out the cars and trying to, you know, keep things at least a little bit safe out there. That's the stuff that drives me nuts. Cause I know that they really, really don't even, they're not even like in the same realm. So, so, so if, the know, sentence, if the sentence starts with something like, so the last time I was at the Porsche car club, you guys didn't do this to me. You start to get a little frustrated. Yeah, or or <laughs> last time I was on the quarter mile, yeah. or the or the three eighths oval, you know. Yeah, it's always that three eighths oval. Mm. So mm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. crazy, but it passes SCCA. We get the, this is an SCCA car. It's fine. Yeah, I'm just like it, <laughs> right. It passed the, the last scrutineering it got was in 1977. So. Uh, yeah, it, you're right. It passed SCCA in '84, and it hasn't been retexted since. Yeah, so <laughs> safe for traffic cones. So you're fine. Yeah, yeah, good to go. Uh, and then the ugly. I'd say. Yeah. Uh, so we had a. This is an event where we had like a pretty high name driver and I or high 
highfalutin, whatever you want to call it, somebody who pretty much felt that they were above the rules. And so they did something on track. They got a black flag. It was a passing under yellow or whatever it was. I don't even remember what it was. But uh, rather than coming in and obeying the flags, they sent their team captain down on the radio to come argue with us about it. And um, so, you know, the team captain is trying to argue this black flag. And so, but we're still black flagging him every time as the car's still going around. And then it's, you know, worse and worse and they're still arguing and the guy's just refusing to come in there and so we uh uh we actually had to do like a full course yellow put the bloody pace truck out there and it was it wasn't i mean it was that point they finally on the radio it's just like oh you, you're gonna have to come in because they're just gonna put the whole field under caution and we did although they came right back in again the, the pace car that is but yeah that would be the ugly is that uh this one driver who was so adamant that they didn't pass under yellow or do some other thing was about to ruin everybody's race not just theirs he was having so, a temper tantrum absolutely um was he an so entrepreneur I, I have no idea what his name was i'm not gonna <laughs> call him out i honestly don't remember but at, uh clearly he felt that his driving was above reproach and it was not possible that he could have that you know he could ever have an on-track offense he was clearly beyond that only novices and noobs would have an on-track offense he was his driving was clearly at a higher level than that so mm. yeah and he was he was promptly removed from the vehicle and didn't drive with us again and didn't right. drive again yes uh so the I, i'm trying to remember names and the problem is i'm not remembering names so this is going to be a generic story we were at the ridge a number of years ago which is a local track here in the northwest and um the Ridge is a, is a big event for us. It's a very popular track. We get lots of teams to come out. And we'd had a really good event. I think this was 2018. Um, mm -hmm. And, and it, was, it was a fun event, and everything went pretty well. And I had a gentleman come up to me, an older gentleman. He must have been 65, about. And in every race, we get people go, oh, hey, thank you. That was a really great time. Or, hey, thanks. That was, you know, that was amazing. And he came up, and he said, Hey, I wanted to thank you guys for this event. Um, I got my son to come out and go racing with me, uh, and we just had a really good weekend. And I, you know, oh, hey, that's great. You know, I'm glad you and your son. He said, and you know, he and I, uh, we hadn't been talking for a number of years, so uh, this is the first time we've gotten together. And uh, we we came out here, and we did this racing thing, and we had a really good time. And we, we've had a good weekend together. I just want to thank you guys for this opportunity to, to do something positive with my son. So, uh, you know, the message that I've always put forth that Chris and I talked about earlier is that this is a people thing and that we're here mm -hmm. for people to hear somebody say, Hey, you guys gave me a chance to hang out with my son again. That was, uh, that was pretty spectacular. Um, I wish I remember who it was, God, but it's two years ago and I, there's a lot of beer between here and there. <laughs> <laughs> the, the bad, uh, when I first started with lucky dog, they'd been running for about a year. I think Chris, is that right? You guys have been doing it for about a year, a little over a year. And, um, I came in to be the enforcer and things had gotten a little unruly. And I think in the first three races I was part of, we had to red flag the race and do what we have, what we call a come to Jesus meeting, where we stop all the cars, pull everyone out of the car and I stand on the wall and yell at them. So it's not like we can black flag enough people to make this make sense. We have to stop everyone and tell them, you guys need to quit running into each other you need to quit driving off track. You need to quit racing like this is a sprint race. And we had to do that race after race after race when we first started getting going. People just didn't get the message that we were taking safety seriously and we wanted right. the cars to last through an endurance race. So at this point, we very, very rarely have the situations. So I think we've really turned the, uh, the attitude around. But early on, it was bad how often we had to have come to Jesus meetings. And the ugly... Um, we had a gentleman at Pacific who received a black flag, and I'm the black flag guy, and Chris is nodding his head because he already knows who I'm talking about. Um, yeah, yeah, I can say his initials if I wanted yeah, to, but I won't. Um, so, Eric, when you say you're the black flag guy, that means that I – say I say I was driving on track. <laughs> just say, the for Alan's, instance, Alan's I would get a black flag. offended somebody else has just the title. A, just, just say, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm driving around. I come in, and I see a, a lovely person at the end of the you know pit in, and I, I get my timer. Nobody and I come up to you, and I'm like, hey, 
what's going on? Right, and you're like, "Hey, why do you always drive like such a jerk?" Like that's what you mean by the black flag guy. So. That's my job. Yeah, I, I tell you why I got the black flag. I decide how long to hold you, and it's it's amazing to me because I give this message all the time. How long I hold you is a set number. However, it can be really, really heavily influenced by your attitude. So if somebody comes in and says, "Oh, I before I even start talking, they say I passed under yellow. I know I did it. I totally am aware of it." So you know what? Like, all right, you know, you, you got a, a minute left. Sit here. If they come in and they're saying, no, it wasn't me, it wasn't possible, eh, they might sit there for 10 minutes because we don't need that kind of person to go back on track all hot-headed. So right. this is what happens is that somebody came in, oh, I didn't possibly do that, it couldn't have been me, wasn't me, and he got so livid that I had to pull him out of the car. I said, you, <gasps> you, you drive your car back to the paddock, get out of the car, put one of your teammates back in the car. Um, I'll let you guys keep racing, but your attitude is way out of line. You're, you're not okay to be on track. You're screaming, so, you know, he's – using four letter words, really getting in my face. And so I send him away and he, he drives off to his pit in a huff and, and the car comes back out with another driver in it. And you know, I, I don't think anything of it. Um, and about an hour later, he comes walking over to me. Uh, and this is at Pacific where I am not down a pit lane. I'm actually in the paddock where everybody else is. And he comes up to the fence behind me and says, hey, I want to talk to you about that. I'm like, oh, oh okay. You know, sometimes people won't come talk about it. And he said, Something to the effect of, there was such crazy driving going on out there. There's no way I did that. If you guys think I, I caused some, some trouble, I'm just going to go back out there and take out the leader. So I'm getting back in the car in five minutes, and I'm going to go hit the leader. <laughs> so he tells you this. Wow. As he's getting back in the car in five minutes, he's going to go take out the leader. So we had to pull his car off track with the other driver in it and gather his team and let them know that he had just informed us that he was going to take out the leader and that their car was not going to be allowed back on track that weekend because of his actions. Um, <gasps> he had to go and deal with his team, getting them kicked out of the race for threatening to crash the leader of the race because he was so mad about his black flag. So that was... Wow. So wow. lesson to all you guys listening out there, keep your head, keep your cool, we'll have a good weekend. Get all hot and bothered, things do not go well. Wow. I That's gotta put a bonus nice. multiplier on that one. The uh, the, the bonus multiplier on that was that in between that hour that he was, you know, he walked off angry. The cool down period. The cool down. The cool down. Period, right. No, well, actually. Just... What... Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no he, he chose to use that period of time no. to come on down to race control and uh, verbally harass me and another volunteer that was down there with me. Uh, tell us how that we had no idea how to run a race threaten us and also threatened the same thing that he was going to go out and take out the leader so that he was winning points across the board yeah, with all everywhere. the point you know but we, of course we're on the radio so everybody knew that he'd taken these actions i couldn't believe i was beside myself that he went to eric after this conversation and then told eric he was going to get in the car and go out and hit somebody intentionally and we're just like uh yeah no it doesn't work like that it doesn't work like that. Yeah. It's a shame that most racers don't get to hear Chris and I on the radio because we have a pretty good banter going. So you heard a phrase there, Chris, throughout. It's a bonus multiplier. Yep. People get black flags. And if they continue to be terrible on the racetrack during their black flag period, they get bonus multipliers which uh, and double down, which makes their, their penalty last longer. And we have a favorite penalty that we love to give out that actually became an official penalty. It's called the ass hat. And it makes me really happy to give it. That's somebody who hasn't necessarily blatantly broken a rule. They're just driving like such an asset. They're pushing people off track and they're making everybody around them miserable. But we'll pull them in and tell them that their penalty is asshat. And we have a sticker we put on the back of their car that looks like a butt on top of your head. So that's their penalty is to drive around with the sticker so everybody knows that they're an asshat. Oh, yes. that's awesome. <laughs> there are three magnitudes of asshattery. There's general asshattery. Then there is... Uh, uh, it's like severe or you know chronic ass hattery, yeah. and then yeah. the the most is the acute ass hattery. So yeah. um, there's three levels of ass hattery. If you tr would try for the fourth level of ass hattery, you're you're not racing anymore. It's not, so, yeah, there's not. Yeah. Yeah, it's, is there is there a, a future potential for a top hat ass hat? There we go. That's the new award we give out. People who get ass hats more than once, perhaps. That's right. 
Nice. Very nice. So we got, we got a race coming up in Charlotte. What, what could some, you know, like idiots that might listen to us here on this podcast, because there aren't any, but just say there was, what should we do what, for, for prepping our cars, for racing, for what do we need to know? Well, I think there's, there's two important things for people to know is that our rules are simple. So please read them because that is a real problem. People just assume the rules instead of going through and reading them. Um, and they, they find those at the Porsche car club. Yes, is that, that's exactly right. Yeah, okay. go, to, go to SCCA.com, look for Lucky Dog. <laughs> um, RaceLucky.com, please. RaceLucky.com. And, and uh, uh, you know, we have to have a fire system. We, we require there to be a fire extinguisher system in the car that meets our standards. Um, if you have a fuel cell, it has to be an FIA certified fuel cell. And so not all fuel cells meet our fuel cell requirements. You need to have a window net on the driver's side uh, that, that actually covers the window. If you can sit in the car and wave at your friends out the window, the window net's not doing you any good. So uh, make sure it actually does its job. Uh, and the other thing is that we don't have fiscal limitations. So all these lemons racers, if you guys have the super secret cheaty engine, go ahead and put it in. If you have a, a trick suspension, go ahead and bolt it on. We don't care. If you want to you know, throw an aftermarket ECU in there, great, do it. You, you can run what you brung. This is open. Um, people who have uh, like Pro 3 cars or Spec E46 cars or Spec Miatas, those are all very viable, very good Lucky Dog cars for us. So um, the people who've been racing lemons and have another race car, you might consider bringing both or bringing out your fancy car. Uh, we, we work really hard to make sure that the contact is kept to a minimum. Uh, we penalize it heavily and, and really encourage people to avoid the contact. And uh, we're open to uh, every race car. So, so yeah, this, this can be a chance for teams uh, to really expand their experience on the racetrack for endurance racing. Yeah, awesome. and we know we're going into the heart of racing over there, so it's got to be a production car. You can't bring out your stock car chassis, no how chassis, no tube chassis, no tube frame cars. It's got to be a production vehicle. Alan, um, you say that, but we have people that show yeah, up with tube cars. Yeah, no, we got a tube frame Mustang that likes to show up, and we got a car. It was a Camaro, but now it's mostly a hobby stock of some kind, so... Um, you know, those, that's the issue. And we know we're, we head that direction. We're going to get those because there's a bunch of used chassis lying around, but it's got to be a production car. You can't just have the sheet metal hanging off a tube frame. That doesn't count. Oh, man. We're All safe because right. we don't even know how to do that. So that's fine. Neither do I. But yeah. <laughs> I always look at those cars and think it's amazing, but yeah, we don't want them. Um, yeah. Another thing to remember is that we're all there to have fun. Uh, we don't take this super seriously. This is not a living for us. I know that the Lemons guys, the, their core group, this is their living and they drive around the country and run multiple races and this is how they make their money. None of us are doing this for a living. This is, this is our hobby. We're here to enjoy it. Uh, so from a staff perspective, all you're gonna get is positivity. We're there to, to make this a great race for everyone. Um, so hopefully that's a, a welcome thing for people who have never raced with us before. They'll find that we are the nicest, most accommodating group that we can be while still putting on a safe event. Heck yeah. yeah. Bring for everybody listening, uh, the bring your SCCA car. It we it'll work great. Bring your NASA car, even though NASA doesn't really do East Coast stuff. Bring your club car, you know whatever you race in the club. It'll probably be just fine. And if you're in Lemons, absolutely bring your Lemons cars. Bring bring all of them. We're gonna have a good time at Charlotte. Awesome. We'll, we will be there. And you know there are even I'm gonna say this with caution. There are, are even some circle track cars that could come race with us. Um, if their cage is built well, then that car is fine. The problem we have is that often circle track cages are um, built out of PVC pipe and not actual steel tubing. So, uh, ours, ours no, but if you put the gray it. paint on it, it's fine, right? Isn't it? We, we have yeah. seen some cages that really baffle the mind with how really? bad they are. I think we've sent one car to the paddock to cut their cage out and build a new cage overnight on Friday night because it was so bad it was unstable. Wow. And, and they did it. They were so <laughs> committed, cutting. so committed to racing that they bolt, they, so they cut a lot of it out and fixed it up. But then I think by the time they were done, they doubled the weight of the car with the quantity of triangulation and tubes they added in order to make it safe enough. Uh, it was incredible, the quantity of tubes in this cage by the time they were done. And I don't know that it was awesome by any <laughs> stretch of the word but um it was at least compliant <laughs> very nice compliant yeah. it got them through the weekend 
He got it for the weekend, and we told him to never bring it back again. <laughs> oh, jeez. I, I just, I'm just thinking, how do you do that without, a, I mean, a tube bender? Nobody carries a tube bender with them. I think they went and bought a Bruce cage. Does. cage. Okay. Yeah, a tube bender isn't that big. And welded it in. And then they also made a whole bunch of triangulation and used what was there. It was not pretty, but it was at least safe. Oh. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, bring the, the, the Fever Four or Hornets, you know, whatever they call them. You know, some of those would be fine. Uh, again, just check our rules, please, uh, to to know if your car is going to work or not. So, <laughs> all right, boys. Um, we like to play uh, another uh, series of questions called Fast and Furious. We get to know you on just a little bit more of your uh, personal likes, dislikes, and your a little bit of your history. So we're going to start off with the, what was your first car ever? You got your license. What was the first thing you were driving? 77 Celica Liftback GT. It was spectacular. <laughs> it was because it was in a Honda Civic. Right. It was, <laughs> the, and actually, the, you know, it was the, the Japanese uh, Mustang. The 77 Liftback looked like a 70s Mustang. And they are now worth ten to $20,000. I sold mine for 800 bucks. So I'm oh, that I also classifies as the car that got away. Oh. Yep. Uh, <laughs> there lots of those. Mine was uh, the car my dad kind of gave me, and it was a 72 Chevy Nova, but it wasn't a good one. It was four doors, and it was a straight six with a two-speed power glide. But it was mine, so it was awesome. Uh, <laughs> see, see we're, yeah. get, we're getting into the 70s, and for some reason I got a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of heart nostalgia for the 70s cars i like those so what is one thing that no one knows about you that would surprise them there's one thing that what say it again sorry I had to what, what what is the one thing that no one knows about you that would surprise them i like musicals <laughs> wow okay that's, that's definitely awesome. surprising <laughs> that's the first one of those nice i love that that's awesome What do you think, Chris? I successfully got a governor in the state recalled or, wow. or okay. kicked out of office. Say that again? I successfully, with the help of others, uh, we, we had a, a governor that was elected here for a third term. And then shortly after being confirmed in office was ran out for all the scandalous stuff and uh, doing... Uh, the investigations and information security stuff on that and public records requests and all that um, made sure that things uh, showed them the door. So yeah, good times. Good go. times. <laughs> wow. Fairly really famous piece of recent Oregon history. <laughs> there you go. It's, I mean, it, it's not quite a musical, but you know. <laughs> it all could right. be, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> There's a challenge in there somewhere. <laughs> I was going to say, you could write a tragedy with it. it almost, yeah. Yep. All right. Next All question. right. Um, automatic or stick? Manual. Always manual. H having said that, I drive I'm sad that the that has no gears. So, which one? Hmm? I, I, I'm an well, electric car, so there's no gears. It's just an electric motor. So at this point, I don't have any gears. It's one to one, baby. Direct drive. Yep. My only manual vehicle right now is really sad. It's an '82 Toyota pickup with a factory four-speed. So, all my nice. daily drivers, the Fairlane, everything else, are all automatic. It's really tragic. That so is tragic. It is. So, who is your favorite race driver? Me. <laughs> I expect no less. The truth is, Not I don't. Bill? I don't follow her racing at all. I know nothing about about professional racing. Uh, people throw out names of, of pro racers, and I'm like, who? So the answer has to be Randy Post because he comes and hangs out with us. How's that? He breaks our cars. Randy, <laughs> he Randy is. is awesome. Nice Randy is awesome. Randy is awesome. My favorite race driver? That's a good question. I, I also don't know who my favorite would be, although it's probably uh, one of those just insane European Group B drivers that do the insane rally. So yeah. 
yeah, that that's it. I I love that classic Group B stuff. It's awesome. If not that Australian supercar, you know, oh, you all see. Yeah. yeah, yeah, good stuff. So, uh, all right, front, rear, or four wheel drive, or does it matter? Rear. That's why you drive those Hondas. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, I'm a <laughs> rear wheel drive. Definitely, I've driven all three: Subaru, other things, uh, well, the Miata that's rear, and then the Nissan NX2000 was front wheels. Uh, although I, I think I like the Nissan the most. Uh, it doesn't matter. The rear wheel drive was was better. Rear wheel drive. I, I have a Alfa Romeo Spider that I rock around in. That's a four speed manual and rear wheel drive. And even though it's slow and it's terrible, it's my favorite car to drive. <laughs> nice. So what's the car that got away? 68 Pontiac Catalina. Ooh. Wow. And why? Um, it was the second car that I bought and it was a two door hard top and uh, it was gorgeous and I teenagered it to death. And I actually kept it until I was 35. Uh, it sat in my garage in the corner in a pile and I kept looking at it and kept looking at it and I got into race cars and it went away. And uh, yeah. I'm kicking myself now for getting rid of it, but it would still be sitting in the corner because all I do is work on race cars. So. And Chris's didn't get that's away. A, I know the answer to this one. He's still mine didn't. Oh, well, no, that's, I have a classic. I didn't let that one get away, but uh, it's hard to say. Um, although I'm probably going to go with a 75 Dodge D100. You know, that was, that was what I taught myself how to drive stick on. Three on the tree, slant six, just abysmal. But I love <laughs> that truck. Uh, the 75 Dodge, I mean, you, it could have gone maybe it could have got to 90 miles an hour maybe downhill it was so slow yeah he threw it out of an airplane yeah with the wind yeah definitely probably the 75 dodge d100 if not that there was an 85 pontiac bonneville why the 85 bonneville it was my grandma's car it was you know perfect grandma car style it had maybe 30,000 miles on it perfect grandma um, style just perfect. It, yeah, it was it was beige with a beige interior and a <laughs> and a tan vinyl top. It just flawless. But what else goes and, with beige but tan? I mean, yeah. right? Totally. <laughs> you know, it, it, if only it was brown, but it wasn't. It was it was it was <laughs> it was very it was grandma. Brown. Yeah, and uh, but I, th I had to think about that one. It's like, do I want to keep this or not? And I sold it because the power plant, as you know, was that veritable GM five liter 305 pile of crap. And I just, it would, no, you know, the only reason it ran at all is because it only had 30,000 miles. I'm certain that I would have killed it in short order. So I sold it. Tacular. So you've got, I, I don't know if you know this, but we have a, we have a skill we we win the lottery by not even playing so you now have a desert island and on your desert island you have uh, a racetrack and you have uh fully paved roads so what five cars would you take to be on your desert island racetrack and second gen mr2 oh Turf. my favorite i had a 91 yep that's a brilliant car lotus exige uh, FD RX seven. Which years are they? Ninety. Okay. Three through ninety uh, through oh one. Okay. The FD. Like um, the one before. Yeah. Tesla P eighty five ludicrous package. There's no electric on this island. But go ahead. <laughs> we have solar we, oh that's right there's plenty of sunshine i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> and probably a lotus super seven. Oh, nice there's there's not a big one in any of those awesome just like me they're all attainable exactly. I, I you know i'm just not into the supercars because if i can never touch it i'm just not interested in it so i think about stuff that's within my grasp if i you know if i decide to do so see that awesome chris you're on your islands you're just rocking yeah. away that's tough man i i have thought about it before but 
yeah, the supercar stuff is is tough. I I'm probably uh, gonna take an unburnt Ferrari F40. Those are rare because they usually like to burn. Yes. Um. Yeah. And I've always had a strange love for a 66 Plymouth Satellite. Uh, you know, it's got to be a. It, I don't care if it's a GTX, but just a 66 Plymouth Satellite. Is I've it always beige? wanted one. No, it's uh, okay. it's light blue in my in my mind's eye. It's like a light blue silver color. Oh. <laughs> okay. In my mind's eye, you know. Um, man, though. But yeah, uh, I'm gonna go on parody there with uh with Eric's Lotus Exige. Definitely, that's a that's the small quick cornering thing. It'd be fun. Oh, but uh, I got two more and. How about a Dodge D100? <laughs> uh, no, no, the Dodge, not even the the little red truck package is gonna redeem that Dodge. Sorry, uh, I don't know. I I have a it, it's completely abnormal, but I've got a strange love for the Mexican '83 Dodge Modico. So it's got to be because you can get a '383 and a 1983 Dodge Monaco. It's wonderful. That's a brilliant um, piece of information. Yeah, because think of anything in the 80s. You could could have got a 383 in. Um, it's like nothing. So it was awesome. The Mexican Dodge Monaco. Um, and I don't know. Uh, oh, something probably that's just an absolute land yacht. So probably like a 58 Cadillac Eldorado or a Sedan DeVille. You'll just, yeah. you'll just smooth out all the sand dunes by driving through them. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking that the 58, 58 Eldorado would be fine. If not that, uh, like a Buick Electra 225, something. Yeah. Oh, there's a piece of trivia for everyone. The 225 on the Buick Electra, what does that mean? <laughs> it's not horsepower. I'm a little Buick guy. I should know this. Hmm. Length? That's it. It's 225 inches long. Wow, ah. good call, Bill. Yeah, oh. I the calculator and everything, and I couldn't even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be, but you could add the Continental package that put the spare tire up on the back oh. bumper, then it was even mm. longer. You could mm. make that Electra 20 feet long. It was epic. <laughs> Won't He's fit in any garage. Yes. No, not at all. <laughs> Excellent. I've owned, I've owned two Electra 225s in my life. Nice. That's, I have not. That's impressive. I didn't realize. I'm an old Buick guy. Yep. Did it fit in your garage? <laughs> so, okay. Um, what car would you really like to start your race car build from? Go ahead. Say Civic, Eric. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, so th this question is, is relevant because, like I said, I don't like the Civics. So I've actually got a... Uh, this is your dream start. This is dream start? So, like, I've got a, a BMW 330Ci sitting in the driveway. E46? E46. E46 car, but I don't love it. Boy, dream build, though. Or even attainable <laughs> that you so, really, so, really, so. really, really, really want to do. So I've got I've got a buddy right now who's actually doing this. He's got a an RX8, which is the oh, wow. four sports car Mazda made that was really strange. This is a guy that I've raced with for a number of years, Leo Clark. Leo, if you're listening, hello. Um, and he's doing a really, really good build. He's dropping an LS motor in it, so it's going to be a pretty sweet little car when he's done. I'm I'm a little jealous of it. We've talked about that build for years and years, and he's finally sitting down and doing it. So I think I'd I hear you should Alice everything. I mean, I've, I've heard it. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I think I'll throw my hat behind an RX-8. RX-8, it would be a neat build to do. Nice. Would you stay with the, uh, the Magic Flying Dorito, or are you going to go somewhere else? I hate rotaries. Hate rotaries. And not for the reasons everybody else hates them, that they blow up. I hate the way they sound. I just can't handle the buzzing exhaust. Drone. out of pit out every time. It just drives me bonkers. The drone. Yep, it's awful. Oh boy, that's a good question. Um, I'm probably just gonna press an easy button and start building it from a C6 Corvette. Ooh. So Ooh. that's what I'll start with. It'll probably be a C6 Corvette when I'm done, but uh, it could change. 
Um, but changing Magic the fiberglass turn into a C7? to something. Well, I don't know. I mean, it, <laughs> you'd have to be really good at fiberglass work to make it something else. So maybe um, to add a rotary to it. Yeah, no. Eric's got a spare one, apparently. You know, maybe if it's like a quad rotor or a tri rotor or something, or we could go radial engine and throw an airplane engine in there or something. Yes. Yeah, radial engines definitely. <laughs> like a radial, like a twenty-four cylinder radial. Yeah. But it, the problem is it's been done. The problem with lemons is. It's already been done. There's been a true. radio car. <laughs> oh, it's true. Yeah. There's been a boat. There's been an airplane. It, right? It's it's all been done. It's so hard to try to find something original right now. Yep. So just, if you could drive and race cars from one decade in the past, what decade would you choose? This one. <laughs> okay. Modern really? cars are spectacular. The 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 merging of technology with really high quality production means that we have got cars that you can buy at the showroom right now for 40 grand that are spectacular race cars. Commissioner Gordon, we'll be there in a minute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would absolutely race this generation of cars right now. I love them all. I think they're, they're, they're just some awesome selections right now. Even American Iron, Mustangs and Camaros, just spectacular cars right now. Hmm. We haven't gotten that answer yet. I don't disagree. I'm going to pick 1960s, 60 to 70. I mean, if I could pick the specific 10 years, maybe, but you said which decade, the 60s. Uh, I have, even though we're past the island, I have a strange love for the 60s GT40. It's an amazing vehicle. I love it. So yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that Ford GT40. Uh, I'll probably a 66 Ford GT40. So nice. Yeah. Done. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of the 60s. All right, Vicky's favorite question, everybody. Everybody's ready. They're they're dangling for this one. So Jeremy, Hammond, May, Chris, Matt, another one. What's the question? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we get that answer more times than you'd be know. No, really, what's the question? <laughs> You, gotta, you can pick one or you can say, don't care. Whatever. No, he really, he wants to know the question again. That was the question. Who do we like out of all of it? Yeah. Oh, man. Can I go with don't care? Don't care. There you go. Uh, yeah. That, that, I mean, I, I love watching TV shows that involve cars, but that all falls with the pro racing thing. Like, it's a nice distraction, but I just don't give it any energy. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to pick Clarkson, but only because uh, I prefer his asshole that's not scripted. So the unscripted asshole of, of uh, Clarkson is good. The scripted is no good. It's got to be the unscripted. <laughs> Very good. Right. Where would your ultimate road trip be to and from and in what car? Well, that's tough. I'm, you know what? Let's go from Nunavut province, Canada to Santiago, Chile in a Ford GT40. He's very specific. 66. Very specific. I like that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's long enough. Boy, uh, I would go all the way across New Zealand in. Hmm. Yeah, in, 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 a, in a Holden, uh, the Holden SS, whatever the Holden version of the SS. Monero. <laughs> Monero there? Mon Monero, yeah. Yep, so in a Holden Monero, I go across New Zealand. Favorite car movie or car from a movie of all time? Eleanor. Okay. Done 60 seconds. Easy. All right. Mine, Christine, 58 Plymouth Fury. Yeah. Mm -hmm. different connotations in those two cars <laughs> so uh what car would you love to switch with or switch into that you are currently racing against and at what racetrack uh, i would love to have the race invaders car that car is awesome it's really well built it's really well thought out it's not a horsepower monster it's not some huge beast of a car they've just built a really really cool car um 
using mostly attainable bits and pieces, even though they own a race shop. Uh, and I'd race it at ORP. We've been trying to get them on for over a year. Just our schedules just keep going like, wee. So someday. Nice. Yep. Really nice guys, too. That's a tough question. I I don't know. They're all it's like everything in our series just seems kind of attainable. So it's not like there's like a a unicorn that you just like have to pick out. But it doesn't have to be the best um, one. It just has to be the one that's like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm gonna. Um, so I have again, strange love. Somebody in our series races like a seventy-four Datsun B210. It's orange. I would want that 74 Datsun B210. And where would I race it? Probably on a slot car track because of how tiny it is. And <laughs> uh, it has no power. Maybe, you know what? I'd take it up to the horse thief mile. Yeah. You know, outside of Will So Willow Springs is a complex. It's got three tracks and a dirt track and a cart track and all this kind of stuff. But one of the shorter tracks is called the horse thief mile. It's pretty tight. They use it for drifting all the time, but... I'd take that Datsun 210 up to Horse Thief Mile and, and just beat the snot out of it. It'd be great. <laughs> it sounds like it'd be fantastic. So what's your favorite track to race on? So far. So far. ORP. What is it? ORP, Oregon Raceway Park, out in Grass Valley. It is unfortunately a uh, field of dreams. Build it and they will come. And they built it way out in the middle of nowhere and not a lot of people want to drive out there. But it is the most complicated track I've ever driven. You never really get a good flow on it. Uh, you know, I've done hundreds of laps there, and I don't ever feel like I've put together a complete lap. I also, of the courses I've driven, I like ORP the most. It's, uh, it's really interesting. It gives a lot of people uh, a delayed car sickness. It's the weirdest thing ever. You know, it's not exhaust or anything, but after you're done with your two-hour stint, you get out the car, you feel fine, you help with driver change, fuel the car, you go sit down, you drink some water, you're good, and then you barf a half an hour later. It's so oh. odd. <laughs> so odd. But it's a and it's it's not like a one time thing. This has happened to multiple people every time they drive ORP. Um, but you can race it both directions, clockwise or counterclockwise. It only happens to me when we race clockwise. Counterclockwise this never happened to me. Oh wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Got to love oh. motion sickness. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what are you guys currently working on during the, uh, the canceled race season? Uh, well, I just got a job. So I'm oh. actually working. On working. <laughs> so, <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> uh, and, and I've been tinkering with the race motor, but uh, I've got so many projects around here. I'm actually a little bit overwhelmed. And my house is currently torn down to the studs in some places. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm boring project heavy unfortunately how about you chris i have a couple of things going on uh let alone i still work full time because i work for the state so we didn't close we're still open um although you wouldn't know it because we're all telecommuting so it's kind of interesting but our my agency is one of the few agencies that we could actually send everybody home so there's nobody in the office it's actually kind of neat uh yeah but as far as projects around the house uh, I got three kids that need homeschooled. So if I'm not working, um, they have, they start to go to school. Um, and our school year is a little bit different than it is over there. So they'll be in school for at least another month. And so we've got to try and teach a, a seventh grader, a fifth grader and a first grader. So that's a challenge. But if I'm not doing that, um, that 82 Toyota pickup I talked about, uh, we're working on that. I'm teaching my son how to do some basic stuff. Uh, my in-laws gave it to me. It didn't run because, and it didn't, has been sitting in one place for over 10 years. And so we drug it over to my place and it's already got new drums, drum brakes, everything in the back and new wheel bearings and brakes up front. And the, uh, the engine's actually okay. Before we, I started tearing it apart, I did make it run. It, it runs fine. It just hadn't been started in a long time. So, um, but we're doing a lot of cleaning. We're going to paint it and, do some other stuff so yeah teaching my son some mechanic work and just basic stuff it's fun awesome how can uh, everybody keep in contact with you follow you on your you and your teams <laughs> well, they can they can talk to you guys since you guys have more publicity about my team than anybody ever has in history. 
<laughs> we love doing it. I mean, we had such a great time out there. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we like we like going out to see you guys, and we're so happy you guys are coming out east. So, we'll, hell yeah, we will not miss that. Well, I don't do any social media around my team or or my car because I just don't care. But uh, Lucky Dog has a couple of Facebook forums. Uh, Kathy is really active on Twitter, I believe. We we as a series have a whole lot of social media because that's what Kathy does best. And uh, one, one of the guys that works with Jason does a really good job of managing our social media. So we have a pretty strong online presence for a race series. But, you know, for us personally, Chris and I are both on Facebook. We're both uh, middle-aged men, so we're Facebook addicts. So, uh, yeah. I don't have Instagram, sorry. I mean, I do, but I don't, I've never turned it on. Yeah. <laughs> I've got one, but, yeah, I don't do that. Right. Yeah, whatever. As far as following me, since I don't really have a race team anymore, because we, you know – sold that Nissan a few years ago. Uh, we uh, just follow racelucky.com. That's where I'll be. I yeah. go to all the events and you'll find me either in the tech line or in the uh, timing and control tower. So and you know, I'll I'm see gonna, you at our races. I'm, I'm going to push my buddy's page I was just talking about who's building the RX-8. He does a really good job. It's called Apex of Failure because it's a, an old rotary car and he had raced rotaries before. So he's apex of failure on Facebook. He's really active. If you guys want to go follow a cool team on the West Coast doing Lucky Dog stuff, uh, apex is the one. Apex of failure is the team to follow. Awesome, awesome, very good. Can't wait to see that. Well, thank you guys. Thank you for coming on. And uh, hopefully, if everything goes well, we'll be seeing you in uh, two months down south. And uh, every, how how many people are coming out from your side with the uh, the Lucky Dog crew? Is the whole team coming out? Uh, we think so, but we don't really know. Hmm. It, it's, it's one of those, uh, can we all get time off? Can we all fly? You know, right. But we think so. We think it'll be the whole crew. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Yep. Awesome. So we will be there. We will be there with three cars, only partially filled with people we have. We've got two lucky dog people already coming out. We've got, uh, Jeff Wright and, uh, Def Stig coming out. So, Perfect. uh, one of your good guys. Yep, absolutely. They've already, well, Jeff's already driven with us one time. He drove at uh, New Hampshire. So I think he's, uh, he said, hey, why don't I come out to Charlotte? And I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> so I think we're trading seats now. So, which is Jeff's fun. Jeff's got his Miata parked in my yard. He's one of my 25. Yeah, there you Hell go. Hell yeah. Awesome. So we will be out and there. When, when we say he drove for us. It's more like he fed our truck three power steering pumps, and it still wanted more. It did. Like he did but such a good job helping us out out and there in Portland. We bring him over here to race, and we just had him wrenching like you wouldn't believe. Oh man, he does like to turn wrenches. Pretty good at it. Does. He had a blast. He had a blast. <laughs> he does. He helped us with your Civic. He helped us with our truck. He uh, <laughs> he he. Someday he'll get to be behind the wheel. Actually, he was behind the wheel for a few hours. So yeah, that's good. That's good. All right, y'all. Yeah, we should go eat some dinner and some food. Yes. Thank you guys for coming on. Say hi to everybody for us, and uh, awesome. we will, we will keep pounding the uh, Charlotte entries, and hopefully that'll be sold out as most of your races are. And uh, hope you guys have a great night. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. Dominating with Dawson. Okay, Ben. I'm at the uh, I'm at the track, and I keep hearing people talking about the line. I hear people talking about the racing line. I hear people about the school line. I hear people talking about the Porsche line. I hear people <laughs> uh, making jokes about the Mustang line. What are these lines? Because the, the, there's no lines on the road. And uh, when do you diverge from a racing line? Well, first of all, let's say this to the Mustang brethren. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do the Mustang joke. Love y'all. Um, <laughs> it was so easy. No, I mean, the, the, uh, the, the, the line is the fastest way for you to get your car around the track you get you and your car around the track so part of it has to do with what you're comfortable with you know in general so the line's gonna be different for somebody who's first day of the track than then my you know michael schumacher would, would drive the track so but in general the, the line is going to be dependent on you and their car and the track the condition of the track whether it's wet or dry so uh, a lot of things dictate how you get your car around the track but mm-hmm. ideally the, the line is the fastest way you could get your car around the track in the dry is what people are thinking of Okay, so there's there's the geometrical line where you kind right. of maximize the radius so you can go as fast, but then there's the racing line, which is usually different. 
Yeah. How or why would they be different? Uh, you know, it's weird. There's there's a, there's, there's one in, uh, in VR. There's a little section called Snake, and if you took the perfectly geometrical line through there, which you would think would work, uh, you will get off. You'll get off and spin. I only know that because I had a student who did it and I'm spinning into the tire wall. But um, but it, it's it's one where you have to run what feels like an unnaturally late apex to to get turned in for that whole section. And if you don't do it, you'll get out of the dirty stuff. So I don't, I don't know what specifically what it's a function of, but it's a place where you don't run a geometrical line. You have to kind of run this BIR magic, but it works every time. And if you screw it up, you're in big trouble. So. So it, it, I think part of it is in look, looking at a trap map, you can kind of figure out what your line is, but sometimes there's a, a change in grip or a change in um, sure. camber. It might, be, or, it, might be, it might be off camera. It might be a really a place where, where the, the, the curving is so evil as you're just going to avoid it and kind of take a different way through there or something like that. Right. Um, you know, so, and sometimes what it might, might appear to be what you think you're going to be doing looking at a trap map is actually going to be a straight line because you realize that, you know, it's a place where the curves are so friendly. You're going to really run a lot straighter than what the track map appears to be. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, I can see that. And then the, uh, the, the racing line differs from the uh, geometric line sometimes because you're trying to maximize your uh, straightaway time or time at highest speed. And right, you're willing right. to give up a little bit of distance on a slower part to maximize a lot of distance on a faster part. So. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're totally right. We were talking about Oak Tree, for example, at VR and how it's kind of that, that oblique angle. You just want to throw the car any which way in there as long as you get down to the, to the, to the point where you can get rotated and back on the throttle across the apex so you give yourself some more straightaway. So, so yeah, you're, you're definitely not running what would, be the, what would make the most sense uh, to a computer. Okay. There. Well, I'm thinking that all the stories that we talk about, you keep mentioning VIR, so I need to get there so I can know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah, all right. I, I'm always talking about it because it's, it's a track I've been driving since 2005, and it's, it's just always my, my home reference point. <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. It's It's been on the list. It's just, you know. You got to get down there. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a track that teaches me something new every lap. It's, it's a, I'm so lucky to have it an hour from my house. Oh, we'll, have to, uh, we'll have to meet there, and then you can uh, make fun of my driving. All right. Very well, sir. Thank you. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Please subscribe at your uh, favorite podcast source. If you have any questions, feel free to send them to us at our Gmail at garageheroesandtraining at gmail.com or just leave a comment in our uh, website, garageheroesandtraining.com. And if you want to follow along with what we're doing, we usually post in Instagram at Garage Heroes and Training or on Facebook at Garage Heroes IT. We really want to thank Eric and Chris for coming on from Lucky Dog, and we will uh, look forward to seeing them. And hopefully, if everything goes well with the racing season, we'll be down there in Charlotte the middle of August. I think it's August like 14th or so. So uh, thanks again. Hope to see everybody out there racing with us as soon as everybody's allowed to be out there racing. Thanks, everybody. Bye. I was one, night, like, oh. yeah, one, one night it took an hour and a half to download the file. I was like, holy cow. I was almost as bored as Jennifer looks right now. <laughs> <laughs> Bam. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Jen's just like, do, boo, do, boo, do, boo, do. Just wait. No worries. Hair's looking good. Looking good. Yep. Quarantine cut still holding up. Stop. Nice work. Quar quarantine cut. <laughs> what? Well, yeah, I mean, totally. You know. What's up, no, Chris? The, uh, that was like totally the um, last thing I did. So the, the day that they announced they were going to close everything, <laughs> I got a haircut. Yeah. I got my teeth cleaned at the dentist and I went out for dinner because <laughs> I, knew I wasn't going to be able to do for a long time. Yeah, it seems that way. Okay, hey. my crowd, remember how the uh, the naming goes?
<laughs> oh snap! Oh yeah. Reverse. The name you always mess it cool up. Cool. I'll go first. Okay. Then Jen. Oh, okay. Don't worry yeah. about that, Sarah and Chris. We're just if we're just trying to figure out how to line up. We we have a line leader, <laughs> but we just don't I know how to line mess up. I think up just on purpose for Bill. That's, whatever. Because <laughs> I know it is like a thorn in his side. <laughs> If, if we could just do, the, okay, so here's my top three. If we could do the intro in the correct order, if you yeah. guys could ever reply to an email yeah. or, or text. a text message. <laughs> you can do that? I didn't know that yeah. was a thing. You know, I mean, it's whatever. You guys do what you no want, idea. though. It's okay. What little hair I have is going to be cut off anyway. All right. So you guys good to go? Chris looking yeah. all fancy with his great background. Eric looking all <laughs> eric -y. <laughs> you were talking about names. I thought you were going for our dog names. We all have dog names. You oh, know. do you? Oh, really? Oh, 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 that's a lucky oh, dog. Oh, burning pod, burning pod. Burning oh, pod. Vicky, you're on it. All right. <sighs> Just as I get started, Alan runs to get a beer and. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I, I got the mic on. I, I'll oh. mute it. I'm. Just I'll go grab this some is water. usually where Alan grabs a bag of chips or. This is where Vicky goes. <laughs> I already, to the already, already got the stuff. There you, go. God, you guys are like podcast professionals, right? When we're going to start, everybody leaves. It's yeah, like, pretty much. <laughs> All right, very well. Man, My drink is not upstairs. I have to go get it. <laughs> See, <laughs> so, we're just uh, editing as hard as possible. That's all. That's okay. It's fine. It's all right. Most people have to drink to go on our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Affirmative. I'm kind of wishing I grabbed a beer right about now. <laughs> Well, you will when we're done. So, here we go. So, uh, not not to uh, talk about the other brand, but uh, Lemons I Racing tonight is the uh, non steering wheel, non pedal Invitational, <laughs> where people have to use anything but that. So we have uh, that I know confirmed. We have the Guitar Hero guitar controller. We have the uh, Dance Dance Revolution keypad on the floor. Oh, yeah. We have uh, somebody wired up with potentiometers so that it's uh, the gas is uh, zero to 100. But if you spin just a little bit more, it'll go to 100 break. So that's going to be fun. So it's, it's kind of a continuous. And then um, everybody, a lot of people with keypads. So you see a lot I of cars. I think somebody actually did an Etch-A-Sketch, too. Yes, somebody did. Oh. I was going to get there. There is an Etch-a-Sketch driving controller. <laughs> and we all know how that's good Etch-a-Sketch is at, at round, smooth curves. So that's, that's awesome because you can just shake it and then exactly. your car's damage is repaired. <laughs> yeah, we'll be, we'll be watching that on YouTube tonight. Heck yeah. 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 <laughs> our, you know, our racing community is nothing if not creative. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, well, I have these pedals and wheels, but what can I do to build something else that works even worse i've got time <laughs> much like lemons <laughs> i have a perfectly Gosh. good stock car right. how can i screw it up <laughs> let's add yeah, soap engineering to this car that's the best plan that's right what's that let's add soviet engineering to this car take out the bmw engine and put it a soviet one that's right <laughs> uh, okay well you know <laughs> this is why we fit in the group shall we say Chris, you're on mute. I don't know if you know. I did. I figured you didn't need to hear my mastication. We don't, but I was just make, I was just making sure because <laughs> we have Teresa and mastication. We have somebody uh, <laughs> somebody who uh, forgets they're on mute, and you'll just see them talking for a while, and I just sit there and wait and wait and wait and wait. And wait. It's fun. <laughs> it's awesome. All right, very well. All right, right here, we're, only, we're only thirteen minutes over, so we're way ahead of schedule tonight.